I originally was going to do two videos here because something recent happened to me last night, but I still want to keep these vlogs going. So, um, yeah, I'll talk about it. So this is The Shepherd. This is the short film that was the pilot episode for The Chosen, and it talks about Jesus' birth. And so it's a short film that Dallas Jenkins originally did in 2017 for his church. And it talks about the birth of Christ through the point of view of the shepherds. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting take. Okay, let's see what they do. And it's very, very interesting uh, watching this again. So... I've seen this a few times. I watch it every Christmas. I've been watching it every Christmas for the past well, two, three years now. And um, this was the short film that basically birthed the show The Chosen. So it's technically the pilot episode. And I, I want to read something here. So the book of Micah in the Old Testament, it's a short book. I have my Bible right here. It's uh, it's only seven chapters. It's a short book. And the reason I bring up Micah is because one of the priests of the Sanhedrin, I think, is um, reading from the scroll of Micah in this short, and where he's talking about Jesus' birth. And I want to read to you um, what he says in this episode. So it's Micah chapter 5. Verse 2, a promised ruler from Bethlehem. Now, this is Old Testament. Jesus, Jesus didn't come yet. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratha, I think, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from, old, from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Now, I read that a few times, and I like it. I mainly looked it up because it was said in the episode. But what I like about it is that, and this is in Micah, you know, I thought Isaiah was the one that did all the prophesying about Jesus. Because Isaiah, there's so many chapters in Isaiah. <laughs> uh, but I never really looked at Micah before. And uh, and the priest in the episode, he does quote um, Isaiah as well. But Micah, I've never really looked at. So I, I read that and I'm like, wow, that's, it's talking about Jesus. You know? So... Let me tell you what I think of the episode. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic, obviously. I'm going to say every episode is fantastic of this show. Uh, I love how we see this shepherd. So it starts off with a little bit of the backstory of what's what's going on with the Romans and with Caesar Augustus and how everybody was heavily taxed and, um, you know, for 400 years everybody was silent and but priests kept reading the scrolls, talking about of the coming Messiah to save God's people. And um, so we see this shepherd who has a lamb, and the shepherd, uh, his foot is broken, so he's hobbled. He's walking, he's got one of those um, walking sticks, you know, he can't walk on two feet, he's crippled, and he has a lamb, and he's walking towards Bethlehem. And and as soon as I saw the Bethlehem sign, I'm like, okay, I know where this is going. <laughs> and so he goes into town to uh, see if he can use this lamb as a sacrifice. 
because before Jesus came, and I didn't know this, I think I might be saying this right, I could be wrong, but before Jesus came, what the uh, Hebrews did was they would have a lamb that was pure, which meant no cuts on it, nothing, nothing like that, and the lamb would be sacrificed until the Messiah came. And I thought about that for a long time, and I thought, oh, is that why they call him the Lamb of God? Like, I never I never put two and two together. So, uh, so he has this lamb, and he's trying to see if this lamb is worthy. And it has a little cut underneath its, um, its hind leg. And the, uh, I think it's, a, it's one of the Sanhedrin talking to him. I could be wrong, but he basically says, I can't use this lamb. This lamb is unclean. You can't use it. You have to get a better one. And, and, but the shepherd also wants to learn about Torah and he's going into synagogues and he's getting kicked out because he's bleeding and they're, they all say, oh, you are unclean. Get out of here. Get out. And he's like, I want to learn. I want to learn Torah, please. I'm trying to study. And they throw him out. And then he meets Joseph and Mary. He meets them. They're just passing through. And he's kind of an outsider, this shepherd. I think his name is Simon. Interesting how his name is Simon. Uh, it's not It's not Simon Peter, no. But uh, so he's, you know, he's basically an outcast. And then one night, this giant light comes shining down on him and the other shepherds that he's with. And they follow this light, the star. And they find Mary giving birth. And they all believe that that's him. That's the Messiah. And they run into town and tell everybody. And one of my favorite lines in the whole thing is at the very end when uh, that the guy that the, the shepherd was talking to earlier about selling his lamb, he says, he says to him very angrily, he's like, well, did you do it? Did you go and find a lamb that is worthy of a sacrifice? And the camera just zooms into Simon's face. And I'm like, oh, I see what you did there. That's good. That's really good. So, and then it just ends there. It's short. It's, it's, it's barely 20 minutes, which I guess makes it the shortest chosen episode. <laughs> um, but I, I really love this short film. I think it's great. I, like I said, I watch this every year at Christmas time. Um, and, uh. Yeah, those so those are my thoughts on that episode. But what I re really want to talk about is something else, and this is kind of something that happened to me uh, last night, actually. So, for those who don't know, I I do, and and it it does relate to Jesus a lot. It really does. I sh probably should do this as a separate video, but I think I'll put it in here instead. So. I, for those who don't know, I work as a roadie for a DJ company part-time. And I've been doing this for about three years now. So I had a gig last night out in Cinnaminson, and I really had nothing else to do because I just help set up. They do the gig, and when the gig is over, I drive with the van. I come back, tear down, we throw everything back in the van, we come back to... Um, South Jersey. So that's pretty much what I do. So for about four or five hours, I got a lot of free time on my hands. I'm not doing anything. But I'm not, I can't come home because I live in Cinnaminson. I mean, it's far away. Oh, no, I don't live in Cinnaminson. It's where the gig is. So, but I can't drive home, so I'm got, I got to be in the area. So I'm like, mm, what can I do that can kill five hours? So I look, up, I look it up on my phone, and I notice that the old movie theater that I used to go to when I was a kid was playing Jesus Revolution. And I thought, oh, I really want to see that movie. Jonathan Rumi's in it. It looks really good. I like Kelsey Grammer. Like, I really... And again, I love 60s music. Oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see it. So, I... I and, and I found out the theater is 20 minutes away from where the gig is, and it starts in half hour, the movie. So I'm like, well, how long is it? Two hours? Okay, yeah, I'll go see it. So I got in the van... After we finish setting up for the gig, while the gig is going, I take the van, I go to the movie theater, and I decide to go in. And all the while I'm going to this movie, 
I'm waiting to hear back from someone. And I won't go into too much detail, but let's just say it's somebody that I'm dating. It is. And it, we were getting, we're getting along really well. Really, really well. And we were, we're, we're going to go out on our third date coming up. I was really excited about it. I, 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 I was. And as I go, now I'm waiting to hear back from her. I'm waiting to hear back, and I haven't heard back yet. And I thought this is weird. This is this is this is strange. So, but I didn't think too much of it. I'm like, no, no, no. She's she's busy at this time of day. She'll get back to me as soon as she gets off work. It's fine. So then I go to see Jesus Revolution, and it was phenomenal, you guys. Seriously, if you if you're looking, listen. Even if you're not looking for, um, you know, even if you're not a fan of the Chosen, like. If you're looking for a good movie to watch, because let me tell you, the movies today suck, okay? I, 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 I barely go to the movies anymore. Bare movies today are terrible. They're awful. If you're looking for a good movie to go to, go see this movie. I, you will not regret seeing this movie at all. Trust me. Trust me. I'm the film's guy, okay? So, like... Believe me, it, it was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. I did not know it was based on a true story until the very end of the movie, but I really loved Jonathan Rumi's performance in this. It's kind of strange hearing him talk regularly in this movie. <laughs> Like, I forget, like, when I watch The Chosen, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's doing an accent there. I never noticed it. Like, he talks different in this movie. <laughs> um, but he's great. I love his, like, it's so obvious he's trying to be like Jesus. Like, I got a lot of vibes from if you If you love The Chosen, you're going to love this movie. Uh, and if you're a fan of The Chosen, I will tell you this. There is, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but there is a moment in that movie where Jonathan Rumi goes and talks to somebody. It's for a split second, but if you're a fan of The Chosen, you're going to notice somebody in this scene with him. And I don't want to ruin it for you, but if, you, but if you're a fan of The Chosen and if, you, if you've seen this movie, you know the scene I'm talking about. It happens in the middle. It, it, it only ha It's on screen for like maybe 10 seconds, but you will pick up on it. I don't want to ruin it for you, but let's just say you're going to see someone else in that scene that you recognize from the chosen next to Jonathan Rumi. <laughs> and so that was that was pretty cool to see. But the movie I loved it. I thought it was great. And after the movie was over, I started walking back to the van. I had about an hour and a half left to kill. So I'm like, well, I got nothing else to do. You know, I'll just sit in the car, listen to music. I got my music here and got in the van and started driving. And I started praying. And because I was I was nervous about the fact that she wasn't texting me back. And I started feeling really, really good for some reason. I don't know why. And then she texted me and we started talking. And I felt, oh, this is going really well. This is great. This is great because I really like her. This is going really well. And she liked me. And then we had a discussion about something and I was telling her how I felt about something that had to do with my faith. And then she said, we should go our separate ways. Don't text me anymore. We're going our separate ways. And I sat there in the van trying to figure it out. And, I mean, yeah, I was heartbroken. I was, but I really thought I had her all wrong. And I realized that what's so cool about that moment happening, my phone keeps thinking, what was so cool about that when she did that to me was not so much the heartbreak that I had from that, but... And, and not and not going back to my old ways, not thinking, oh, I'm alone again, I'll never find anybody. No, not that. That was gone. I didn't feel that. I felt I felt closer to Jesus than I ever have in my life. 
I felt like he was in the van with me. I could feel his presence there, you guys. And the, like, I, for like 10 minutes I was trying to figure out why would she say this, why would she, I thought she was, I thought she would agree with, with, with me on this, and she didn't. And I was shocked. But I realized, because I've been realizing this the past three years, you guys, what's so great about this is that God exposes everybody in some way. You can't hide anything. God exposes everybody. And it's awesome. Because you start to realize who people are in your life and, wh and who you are. And it was so fantastic. And I don't want to give all the details out because the details are not important. But what is important is that I realized this. So even though she dumped me because of where I stand on something. Having to do with Christ. I'm okay with it. I'm okay. Because it's it's God telling you, telling me, No. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Something better's coming. You're going to see. You don't see it yet, but you're going to. It's like the episode episode 7, the invitations, when Jesus says, you know, about, about, about the wind, you know, to Nicodemus. He says, do you, know where it's, do you know where it's going? No. Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know why it's going this way? No. And I don't care. That's what it means to be born again of the Spirit. It's going to work in a way that it's a mystery to you. And while you cannot see it, you can recognize its effect. So right in that moment in my life, the Holy Spirit's working in me. Little moments like that. And I didn't let the storm get the best of me. I didn't. Yeah, I was hurt by it. I'm hurt now. But not because of that. Because I felt Christ's presence. During that moment, something I never thought I would ever do or feel. And I didn't budge. I didn't change how I felt just so I could hold on to her. Because I know that's not, that's not what Jesus wants. That's not what he wants. That's not a good thing. And it's so cool. It's really cool to, to know that when this happens, Jesus doesn't leave you. It's like what Deacon Ralph told me. He said, you know, if you're putting your faith in anyone or anything that can be taken from you, you're putting it in the wrong place. Jesus can't be taken from you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to leave you. He doesn't lie. Who's the liar? Because it's not God. God's telling you who he is. Okay? God's telling you who he is. There's no lies in this. None. None. And I felt fantastic. I don't know if I'm ever going to meet anybody, but I don't care. I don't care. Because I realized it was a test. That It was a test. And I saw what was going on. And I'm happy I saw it that way. I'm glad. And I hope that when you guys have a situation, maybe not a situation like that, but any kind of situation where you know that what you know is right and you stand by it, even though other people disagree with you and other people may even leave you because of it, you still stand by it. You're standing next, you're standing by Jesus. And that's great. That is great. You might lose friendships, you might lose relationships over it, but you're still standing with Christ. And that is something everybody needs to realize. 
And also, I gotta say, it is a lot of fun, a lot of fun, when you know what's going on behind the scenes, and you see it, and you look around and you say to, you say to everybody around, you're like, how can you not see this? I see it, how come you don't? That I can't answer. I don't know why. I don't know. But I'm happy that... I'm happy that that happened. Maybe, maybe God was telling me, hey, you know what? You're going to have, you're going to have heartbreak coming up to you in a couple of hours. Maybe you should go see this movie to help you a little bit. Maybe it'll help you get in touch with your spirituality, help you pray a little bit. Help you to think about what you're going to say in tomorrow's chosen vlog, which is what I'm doing right now. Because I would have been a wreck had I not done any of that stuff before I got that text. Before we had that conversation. And I'm not going to try to figure it out. Because she exposed herself to me. She, 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 told, me, she told me exactly who she was in, in that conversation. And I, I'm having none of that. None of it. And it's a you know, you know, you, you think you know somebody. You have a lot of conversations and you think you know somebody. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then she dumps you. Yeah, I'm, I'm hurt about that, but I, I feel closer to Jesus more than ever now because of that. It's fantastic. See, this is why Jesus allows trials to happen. It's an opportunity for your faith to grow. Look at him. Not, not the storm, because the storm is going to pass. But he doesn't. It says in here, my words never pass away. I don't pass away because the kingdom has no end. God doesn't end. There's no ending with God. Everything else does. But if you accept him, you accept God. You accept Jesus, you accept the Father. Because the Father is the one who gave the Son authority to forgive sins. I'm a sinner, I'm not perfect. I said what I said and I meant it about where I stand on a, on a certain thing. And immediately she said it, go separate ways. And I, I, I was trying to figure it out. I was saying, wait, what? what what's going on here? And then all of a sudden it, it just came to me. And I, I felt... I felt so wonderful. You you have no idea. And you know what? I wonder how many other people have had a situation like this. Because I got to tell you, it feels great. It feels fantastic. So, this, this, this vlog um, has gone on way past the shepherd. <laughs> um, but... This this happened to me last night, and I thought it would be interesting to talk about with this episode because this episode there's there's a lot to say about this episode. But I've said, like I said, it's a short it's a short it's a short film really, uh, and I thought it was great. I didn't talk about I didn't talk about what happened to me last night for sympathy. I'm not looking for credit. I'm not looking for any of that. And if you guys post stuff in the comments, great. I'm I listen, I'm okay. Okay, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm all right. I'm not I'm not hurt by what happened. I mean, I was, but I'm I'm not. I'm happy. I felt Jesus's presence in that moment, in a heartbreaking moment, which usually doesn't happen to me. It usually happens when the good things happen, right? Like, the good thing happens to you, you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you did this. But usually when the bad things happen, you, you don't. No, I'm grateful for that. Because when bad things happen, good or bad, when the bad things happen, people usually rebel. 
I'm not going to. Because I, I'm nothing without Jesus. I'm nothing without him. Nothing. So, that's all I have to say for this. And I think we just wrapped up season one of The Chosen. And next week, we start season two. And season two, episode one, has a lot of great moments that I want to discuss. See you guys next week.